Hey, what's happening? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to be here on LinkedIn Live. It's been like so long. Oh my gosh. When's the last when was the last time we were on LinkedIn Live? I'm just excited to be back here and and talking with you guys and connect with fellow colleagues here on LinkedIn. I have a special guest, Miss Erin Hoffman. We've been talking about succession plan options for healthcare professionals. So believe it or not, we are broadcasting on multiple streams, okay? So for those of you that are joining us on YouTube, welcome. I'm glad you can make it. Folks on Facebook, love my Facebook people. Welcome you guys on Elon Musk on Twitter. <laughs> I'm glad you could join us as well on, on Twitter. I'm happy you can join us. And of course, my people on Clubhouse, um, we're going to be checking back in with you guys a little bit later. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And LinkedIn, man, LinkedIn has come a long way. Um, wonderful platform, great opportunity to, to engage and connect here on LinkedIn. So we're going to go for about 30 minutes or so. Um, we're going to be talking about exit planning and succession planning options for healthcare professionals. There's a comment box. Uh, you, you know, post your questions in the comments. We're going to monitor the comment box and, and answer those questions. And um, also what you want to do is stick around because we're going to take this show on the road. We're going to take this show with the clubhouse after so you can interact with us directly via, via, via audio. So let's kick things off. So normally today we have our m and roundtable sessions. Um, typically our roundtables, we have about 12 to 18 folks and we connect, we collaborate, we share you know, our philosophy here with, with m and is all about collaboration, education, and celebration, right? So what we have done today is taken the educational component from our typical roundtable session and bring it here to LinkedIn Live and to everyone that we are broadcasting to on YouTube, Facebook, and et cetera. Um, so I, ideally, you're getting information that we typically keep exclusive to our members and to our guests. So if you want to learn more about m a you can visit our website, m and to learn more about what we do. So let's kick things off. Let's get things going. So my name is Kyle Griffith. I am the CEO and founder of m a Network, and I'm also the managing partner and principal owner of the NYBB Group, which is a mergers and acquisition company. I have here at me one of our trusted advisors with the m a Network and financial planner with Certified Financial Services. Miss Erin Hoffman, I'm excited to have you as our debut guest for our session today. How, how are you doing? Thanks, Kyle. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, nice to see everyone on, on multiple platforms. Power of uh, technology here. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're on fire, man. We are, I mean, we are definitely, um, this, this, is, this, is, um, this is how you do it in, in 2022, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Plus, we're going to have to record it for folks that miss uh, the, live, the live broadcast. Definitely. So, t so what I want to know is, you know, who's Aaron? What's Aaron all about? Like, I we're going to get into the topic, but since this is our first, you know, you know, session here on on, on LinkedIn Live, why don't you t tell folks who you are, what's your story, and you know, why do you do what you do? Sure. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, so, for those who don't know me, my name is Aaron Hoffman. I'm a financial planner at CFS. And I came into the industry because I really wanted to help educate and empower uh, individuals and business owners alike on how we can really achieve our financial goals and achieve success in the best way. Getting a game plan together, looking at, at gaps and threats and really working right with a trusted advisor to, to help you there. I, I love you know, meeting different entrepreneurs and, and learning from them on particularly the, the healthcare sector and how I got into that specific industry, I, I have a few family members, uh, physical therapists, uh, dental alike, uh, and they really kind of brought me into that industry. So it's near and dear to my heart, and uh, I, I really enjoy working with them. You know what? I, I didn't even know that, right? I, would, <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably would have guessed it, but I didn't know that. So oh, that's awesome. So you came from a, uh, you have a lot of connections with healthcare and your yeah. friends and family. It's just it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So, um, so tell me, so your your firm mm -hmm. uh, so tell me more about what your company certified financial sure. services sure so certified financial services we're headquartered up in uh paramus new jersey 
I can work with clients throughout the country. And we pride ourselves really on taking a holistic approach, right? Of course, we, we specialize in investments in cash flow and wealth management, but we're looking at, aside from investment strategies, also estate planning considerations, right? Different protection strategies that we can utilize, right? And working with other advisors as well to really make a, a really concise um, holistic plan uh, for people. So we really pride ourselves on, on taking that approach with clients and an educational approach with that as well. Awesome, awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, the topic of succession, succession plan is, is, is dear to my heart as well. Yes. And uh, one of the biggest challenges I have, so in my business, you know, my clients, you know, I assist them with the sale of their company, right? But the challenge is you know, they come to our firm. So we are a full service at mergers and acquisition firm based in New York. And, you know, we have companies that come to us and they want to sell their company. But the, 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 the challenge is that they have not been proactive a lot of times and getting the business prepared. A lot that we're gonna talk about that you know, today. So let's talk about that then. Let's talk about the importance of an exit plan and, and what's, what's, what's your role in, in, the, in the process. Absolutely, a great uh, place to start with Kyle. And right, a lot of times I meet with practice owners at, at the startup phase or the growth phase. And even at that point, 10 years down the road, if they're that far from exit planning or retirement, I'll start having these initial conversations on how to navigate succession planning, right? Because the longer timeline we have to think about it, the more options we have. And that's where my role kind of comes in is helping these practice owners to be as productive as possible, making sure the barn door is not left open in terms of gaps and threats. Uh, really initially having a strategy Right? Do, do we stay in and work? Do we get out? I want to first identify the business owner's objectives, right? Really outlining as the practice owner, can you afford to retire, right? What do we want retirement to look like after leaving the practice? So looking there at, at quantifying business, you know, what's going on cash flow wise, what the goals are, right? Does the practice owner have a team of advisors that they're working with? What is that kind of in, in play there? Right. And, and looking at what the business is worth, I think you might be able to speak to this too, Kyle. A lot of businesses do not go through valuing their business. If you asked a business owner, they probably probably wouldn't be able to tell you, right, if, or, or they can admit to having it done. Uh, and, and then I walk through what is actually the best strategy in, in alignment with their goals and the most tax efficient way to go about exiting their practices. Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, the valuation is, is one of the is pretty much where everything starts from, right? Mm -hmm. Your your goal is to use your the sale of your of your practice to fund your retirement, right? Or fund or create that legacy for yourself and your family. And it's you know, I, I like to use the analogy of every year you get a physical, right? You go to your doctor, you get a checkup, you know, so you want to do the same thing for your practice, right? Um, yeah. There are a lot of KPIs, a lot of metrics that each practice has, right? Pay, pay or mix and um, and all the doctors have some issues with reimbursement at times and so on. So um, a lot of things is unique to the medical the medical space. Right. Um, but, you know, doctors are good at what? You know, providing health care and, and treating their patients. And some are good at running their business. But, you know, a lot, a lot of medical professionals don't really understand the business and, and to it. And getting their practice value is, is, is definitely, a, you know, first step. That's very Absolutely. Important. And there's a lot of due diligence, too, right, in preparing the practice for exiting or for succession planning, right? There might be preparation of agreements that we've got to make sure are, are lined up. And a lot of times too, I, I see quite often in more of the smaller healthcare practices, they might be family owned businesses, right? So, so that's kind of where I can come in on how we think about legacy planning. And if there are other right kids outside of, of the practice or the family business that we have to look at, you know, legacy planning that way and how we're going to fund uh, the, the sale. So it's always a, that's kind of what I think is the most exciting part is it's, it's very different for each, each practice owner. Mm -hmm. Now you have um, prepared for us today to talk about the five phases and the five steps to an exit plan. Yep. You, you want to, you know, enlighten us on that? Absolutely. So I, I think a really good way to ease into, right. Mm -hmm. Talking about a successful element plan is, is breaking it up down into five elements. So the first one being identifying as the practice owner, or business owner in general, what is your target departure date, right? We can't create a successful roadmap 
if we don't have a targeted departure date, and I, it, it's very hard to do in six to 12 months, right? How many practice owners come to us, Kyle, and say, yeah, I want to retire by the end of the year, right? It, it might be three years, five years, 10 years out, but that is step one, right? And we have to be able to design our own departures in terms of, of when it occurs and your involvement in the business. Some practice owners want to stay partially involved, right? And some want to completely be out of the business. Right. So visualizing that future and, and what they want to be different from today, what departure means to them is a really good starting point. Right. The mm -hmm. second one being we want to identify, right, what is the preliminary financial needs analysis? What do you as a practice owner need to really live on? And that and that means right, going through a comprehensive exit plan, going through FNA, right? That's going to help us kind of set and assess your financial wants and needs. It, not essentially a financial plan, but simply telling you and the practice how much money that you want to receive from the transfer, right? To, to really to that financial security and independence once you leave that practice. And this is going to, we're going to look at lifestyle, right? Changes in financial needs, um, non-business income streams, other factors. Um, so really important to, to do that. Next step that I, I want to identify um, is who's going to be the target successor, right? How, is there going to be someone within the current practice who's going to be taking over? Do we need to look elsewhere, right? Maybe a, a third party throughout the country to come in? Is there someone in town who can, who can buy into your practice, right? You want to make sure that that control and, and ownership, uh, future ownership of the, the practice is someone that you want to be deemed as, as a great successor, Right? Your exit plan should really reflect your preferences and who that successor is. And it might be a family member. It might be a co-owner. right? It might be multiple employees or an unrelated third party. But that is one of the, the most important steps is kind of identifying that path um, for, for where we want to go. Fourth step is going through that preliminary valuation that we had mentioned earlier. right? Having a preliminary business valuation done is key and getting it done by an appropriate professional, right? That's going to give you and your exit planning team a reliable idea on how your business will contribute to those financial goals, right? That this is one of the most important steps and that we have to do earlier on. And it's going to not only give us a sense of what the practice is worth, but also working towards solutions that's going to allow you to receive that full value of the business. Right. And finally, I walk practice owners through what I call a future cash flow estimate. Cash flow is our most precious financial resource for, for any business owner and individual alike. Right. Cash flow is what drives our current income. It also fuels your continued ownership, right? And your ultimate departure. So we have to make sure that's protected and, and that we go through some estimates there. Right. So again, Working with a professional to prepare cash flow projections are going to help you and, and again your team evaluate the likelihood of success of different exit paths. And going through this estimate is also going to prevent an exit plan from taking a wrong turn and establishing that financial structure that we're going to build that plan on. So those are, I would say, the, the most important five steps uh, to, to sit down and walk through. You know, you know, Aaron, that that you know, that's that's a lot. You know, that's you know, for so for a doctor or for a therapist, you know, a dentist that's running their practice. That's that's a lot for them to manage, right? So maybe you can talk about the, the team that they need to to help incorporate to get all these pieces of the puzzle moving. You can probably talk a bit more about that. Absolutely, right? It, it's a lot for anyone to navigate all these decisions. So that's why well, it's really important when I sit down with a business owner, practice owner, I want to help them establish a team, right? Who, how are we able to, to coordinate all these moving pieces as practice owners, right? And a lot of times we might try to do our own due diligence and, and, and navigate these decisions, but it's difficult. And it's really important that we have a team of trusted advisors who are going to help us be able to navigate these decisions. And that is really why I, I, I love the MA group and, and really speaks uh, to everything that I try to, you know, put together as a holistic approach because you're going to want to work with, right? Someone like Kyle is going to help your business with that business valuation, right? And maybe find those other outside buyers. You're going to want to make sure you've got a strong CPA, 
right, who can help there. Working with a business attorney, maybe a healthcare attorney, right, a business broker, making sure we've got the right insurance pieces in place, right, and and group benefits too. What are what are we leaving behind to those key employees to prevent them from leaving, right? So there's many different aspects that we have to consider, and so important to have a dream team, right? Having that proper billion. I like that dream team. Yeah, I call it the dream team. And I, uh, I'll i sit down actually with the practice owner and draw out a wheel model and say, okay, we're going to start assembling your dream team, right? And it's, it's we have to make it a little bit fun, right? Yeah, In terms yeah. of that. But uh, right, we want to make sure on, on all these advisors on our dream team, are they specific to your industry, right? Are there legal documents that we have to have? Right? We'll talk about a buy-sell agreement in a moment. And, and that's another core piece uh, to have in place when we're talking about exit planning, but they're looking at all these different aspects and, and making sure, right? Are you working in or on your business and that we're all communicating, right? And surrounding yourself really with a team of advisors whose skills are, are going to be a cornerstone for that successful sale. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. You know, um, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of pieces. You need to make sure you have experts in your team, vetted experts, trusted advisors on your team that could assist you with different pieces of the puzzle. Um, that's one of the reasons why we put m together, to put have folks that's ready and vetted that can help business owners in all aspects of the growth or exit strategy. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Ashley that's joined us, Ashley Dolo, Felicia. Um, also, we got to catch up, Felicia. It's been a while. Thanks for joining us. And, and Preston, my, my good buddy, thanks for joining us today on our, on our, on our live stream. So t- talking about the team, I mean, you pay a a key role in that, right? Let's talk about, you know, the, the role of the financial advisor in, in, in this process. Sure. Right. And, and I kind of come in at, at multiple different places, right? Initially, right off the bat to kind of help formulate, again, those five elements, kind of laying that initial groundwork of, hey, here's where we are. Here's where we're going, right? We're helping to assemble that team and walking mm-hmm. through those business strategies. And actually, the first thing that I do, Kyle, before we even walk through those strategies is make sure that the business is currently set up, right? Kind of preparing for that exit plan and properly protected. I want to make sure if there's multiple partners within the practice that they have, right? A a legal document called the buy-sell agreement, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to outline what happens if a partner leaves or retires, right? And how is that buy-sell agreement funded? That's where making sure that business valuation is done comes into play. Right. And another role that I kind of come in is walking through what are the ways that we can exit the business? And there are actually eight ways uh, that we can exit our businesses. So the first being we can either transfer that practice to family members right, or, or an inside key person. Right. We can sell to employees using an ESOP, employee stock ownership plan. We might sell to one or more co-owners. We might sell to an outside third party. You might engage in an initial public offering. You as the, the, the business owner might want to retain ownership and become a passive owner or completely liquidate, right? And the two most common selling strategies for practice owners are usually using a third party sale, right? Or, or transferring to an inside uh, partner who's already in there. Um, and, and we know that one outcome is 100% certain right? Every practice owner today will be leaving their business. It's just simply navigating through which strategy is best for, for your goals and your practice. And that's where I kind of help into to navigate those, those pieces. Yeah. I mean, when, when you're talking about an exit, Aaron, and I uh, actually added one more piece in there, there's, there's, there's two things. At some point you're going to exit and um, you're definitely going to pay taxes, right? <laughs> so you yes. have to figure out how to, <laughs> how to mitigate those yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's two things that you cannot avoid, debt and, and, and taxes. Right. Um, let's talk about uh, business valuation. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, sec- the second phase, yeah. It's really, really important. And, and a couple of benefits of doing a business valuation, right, when determining our, our value of what our practice is even worth, we want to put some some real time and, and it's worth putting financial efforts into this too, because guess what? That's usually the practice owner's largest asset right? Your interest in the business. So having a quality business valuation done is actually going to improve the probability of a successful exit event, right? Since the gap between a business owner's assets and financial needs of that owner following the sale of their business are going to be identified, right? By doing this. And 
having a plan to eliminate that gap is going to help us be more prepared earlier on in that exit planning process. And it's also great because now we can go to, you know, uh, potential buyers or investors and say, hey, here's what my business is valued at. What's your interest, right? And going, engaging in that process is going to help us, right? Going through the due diligence process and, and finding a quality financial buyer. You know, the valuation is, is often overlooked because yeah. a lot of business owners or practice, they hear stories of other practices or businesses sold and they assume, well, right. so-and-so got, you know, 2 million, 10, whatever the number is for their practice, you know, right. you know I, I should get the same even more. Unlike selling real estate, you know, businesses and practice are unique, right? Um, right? Your patients are unique, right? You are unique, right? There's no other doctor like you or therapist like right. you. Your location is unique. Mm -hmm. um, your processes is unique, you know, how you take in patients, your follow-up process, the different types of services you offer within your practices as well is unique. So you have to have a valuation based upon your specific practice. And it's important, I, and whether you're looking to exit now or 10 years from now, um, each one of us looking to grow our business, right? Erin, you have a book of business you're growing. I'm growing from a book of business. As a practice owner, you want to grow your practice. So how can you grow your practice if you don't know where you're at? Right. If you, th if right. you really think about, if you think about it, right? If you don't know where you stand, oh, you know, you know, you know, if you don't know how you're performing as a practice, how can you grow? So the, the valuation does that. It sets the state so you can actually measure your performance. And another quick tip on the valuation, we always recommend for our clients to have a third party valuation. Now yes. we do it internally, and we have some providers that we, that we work with as well on the third party basis, but. You know, let's say, Aaron, I'm working with you. I'm selling your, let's say you're Dr. Hoffman. How about that, right? <laughs> Dr. Hoffman. <laughs> so you're my client. We are, we are working together and I'm presenting your client to a would-be buyer. And a would-be buyer asks, oh, by the way, have you had a valuation done? They say, yes, we had it done. And you know, who did it for you? Oh, I did it myself. I just came with some numbers or right. my intermediary, my advisor did it for me or my CPA did it for me. What do you think will have more credibility? Either one of those folks, or if you said, hey, I had a third party business valuation company do my valuation, which Absolutely. one has more credibility? So we always recommend a third party valuation done almost all the time. I can't stress the importance of it. You're going to save so much money and maximize the valuation of your practice down the road without a, without a doubt. It's a great point, Kyle, and really important. Again, it's 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 so important to get that done and, and early on too. That that is one of the first steps we can take and, and strong baseline we can have. Um, and I, I just wanted to touch on right a, what I've seen kind of lack of planning consequences of not doing the business valuation and not looking into these options and more of that hopeful planning. There's going to be major consequences too that the business itself surviving owners, and maybe even the, the owner's families, right? In terms of the business, there could be loss of revenue, lack of continuity, loss of skills and credit risk, right? There might be disputes involved with, with other co-owners or, or even family members, right? If an unwanted partner comes in, right? And and it's so important to outline these, these goals. That's a big one. There's early on, Un right? Unwanted partners. We've seen it, we've seen it, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, and those partners can be, you know, we have worked in transactions where, unfortunately, one of the owners pass and right. the kids, in, you know, you know, fill, you know, fill in for that, that role. And it's, 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 I don't know how much I can share it just to protect the innocent, but yeah. it's very challenging because you had an owner that ran a business a particular way with all the, all the plan, all the information is in, is in the head, how he ran the business and the employees respond to him as an owner. So right. we have someone that's not doesn't have a that doesn't have a SOP doesn't have a blueprint on how to run the company. Now they're stepping into that owner's shoes. Yeah. I have had cases where employees have not either not respected that new owner or right. have not. You know, they there are certain contracts or agreements that were not written that the previous owner had with employees that now with new ownership that's not enforceable and it can create some some friction. Um, there's a lot of cases there. So you talk about having those arrangements in place. So if you want to protect your family and protect any disputes down the road, I can't stress the importance of having a, a plan in place. So in, 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 in the case where you get injured, you're dis disabled, you know, 
here is here's what happens next okay. right and, and i don't know if you are you going to get into funded buy sell agreements and if you again to that as yeah. well but... yep we can touch on that as well yeah awesome. yeah but right we know the business is either going to be continued sold to surviving owners mm -hmm. or liquidated but there's always going to be a need for cash right that those owners, executors, they might need to pay estate taxes, right? Probate expenses. The surviving family members might need to replace that income stream or, or provide salaries for new employees. So Good point. more planning that we have ahead of time is, is cannot stress enough. Right? And you know what? This is more important. This is even if, if, if you start in a practice, having these projections, having these plans ahead of time, if you can right. build out a strong foundation from beginning, Yep. And then you can build from there is important. So whether you start a practice or growing or exiting, um, having that plan in is it's 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 so important, especially if you're gonna want, want to raise capital, the banks is gonna ask for your well, I'm not gonna go there right now, but um financials, when I get into financials, I'm against a little bit of a rant with financials. I'm not, not that, <laughs> we, we can spend <laughs> a lot of time on that, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so back to you. All right. So, so you brought up the buy-sell agreement, Kylan. This is yeah. back to that initial conversation. When I go through a protection review with these practice owners, this is one of the first protection pieces that I, I make sure is involved. Right. So, so what is a buy-sell agreement? That is a, it's a legal document, right. That's drafted by an attorney, right. It's going to obligate the owners, right. If they buy out the interest of one another, if, if there's a premature death, disabled or, or retiring triggering event, Right. So it's going to ensure that when the more when your practice is ready to exit, right, or a business owner interest might change, that you have it outlined each person's ownership, right? And really important how where I come in is how that document's funded. Right. We need an attorney to draft the legal components, but where I come in is making sure that business valuation is done and how that agreement is funded. Right. And that's really important to do upfront. So that might be done by, you know, an investment vehicle. You, you could fund it, right, with, with a loan, but there, there's also great ways to fund it using insurance vehicles, right? That's usually the safest way to fund it. And again, it's, it's, it's going to be different depending on that particular practice's goals. Um, but again, going back to that business valuation, that is going to out, be outlined in the buy-sell agreement, right, and the partner's interests. So when they're ready to exit, we know, okay, 51% of the practice is going to Kyle and it's going to be funded by X, Y, and Z, right? That's where I kind of come in to help business owners decide how that's going to be funded. Um, and then getting more into exit planning where I come in if if we are selling to, you know, son or daughter in the practice or a key person, how are we going to avoid double taxation, right? If, if that there's a sale like that. So that is 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 where I kind of come in to navigate, hey, how do we fund, right, these deals, these buy-sell agreements, and how do we make sure that that's getting transferred in the most tax-efficient way to, to new owner? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you see a lot of sometimes they have the agreements, but it's not not funded. And that All the time. All the time, right. Yeah. They came to step one and they've got an agreement in place, but it's not funded. And, and why that's so dangerous Kyle, as you know, is that's not funded and partners ready to exit or, or there's a disabling event, right? We don't know how that how our practices, financials are going to look to be able to go to a bank and take out a loan, right? Will we even qualify for that to fund this, right? And, and mm -hmm. financially, are we going to be in a place where we can afford to do that? Uh, so really important to, to sit down and make sure those agreements are funded early on. Awesome. Awesome. Um, are we on three yet or I know there's five of them, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So moving right along, um, let's let's walk through a couple strategies in terms of how we can. Oh, you know what I want to touch on, actually, other things to consider. Right. In, in terms okay. of of what we can think about employees, actually. Right. Wow. So yes, this is this is sometimes what I see a lot of practice owners kind of ignore. Right? Well, we're so focused on actually exiting and then getting those funds in hand, but a lot of times we're ignoring right who our key employees are. So really, what are we offering to them? right? And, and how detrimental could it be in the middle of a sale for our best surgeon, our best physical therapist to walk out 
right? And 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 that could affect the the business reputation, right? So one important thing to think about is is what we're offering, making sure our employees are engaged, right? That that could be devastating to our competitors if a key employee leaves and and they're out of there. So we also want to think about what we can provide to them. That might be retention bonuses. We might look at split dollar deals or, or SERP, deferred compensation plans. So those are important conversations that I have with practice owners as well. So a lot of time, that's the last thing that we, we think about, but our, our key employees are so critically important to the success and future success of our practices. We, we've got to make sure we're retaining them. I actually want to come back and do a session specifically on employees yeah. because they are the backbone of, of every organization. Um, is both, a lot of companies have a hard time finding training and retaining staff. Yeah. And when, when you're talking about healthcare, I mean, who, who likes it when you can't even get an appointment at your doctor's office? You're calling, you're going straight to answer machine or someone's calling you back the next day, trying to book an appointment at your doctor. And, you know, it's, it's right. not, you want to have that, that professional um, service, you know, and um, a lot of doctor's officers are, are, are understaffed, you know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a big thing. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you are too. Hearing from these, these uh, medical professionals, business owners across the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what do you want to talk about next? Um, do you want to get into? Maybe we'll jump to the that last point. Uh, how to navigate, okay. uh, actually exiting our the, the business, right? Yeah, so the options: internal transfer versus external, and okay, let's talk about that. Yeah. So, so we'll touch on those. The two most common that that we usually see in healthcare practices are the first: either either selling or transferring the business to uh, an insider, whether that's a partner, family member, or key employee, or the second strategy, right, selling the business to an outsider, a third-party buyer. So it's kind of just high-level overview, walk through pros and cons of both of those strategies. So let's say we want to sell, right, to, to key employee, other physical therapist or, or the other uh, dental practice or other, excuse me, dental partner who, who knows the business so well, they know our clients and patients so well, right? And this is what I see a lot of small, medium-sized practice owners doing. And it's often favored because that insider is already a ready buyer who's they might have worked with us for a long time, right? They know the culture and stability within our practice, right? They, sometimes they can be a bit more complicated and more riskier uh, only because, right, funding that sale, that that insider, our partner might not have the cash, right, to, to buy us out outright, okay? So that's, that's one thing we have to think about. Um, but again, the further that we plan along, there are strategies we can implement to have that sale ready to go. Right. It, it also means that, you know, we, we might have to use uh, loans that sometimes that comes into play. Right. But with that, there might be a longer time horizon. Right. Payments might stretch out for a decade or more in some cases. Right. If our, if our dental practice is valued at five million dollars. Right. Our, our our partner might not have that five million dollars up front to buy us out. Right. Mm -hmm. so there's some more cash flow pressure on the newer owner. Now, if done correctly, we can avoid double taxation, right, which which would occur if the business is taxed on that revenue and the exiting owner is taxed on those payments received. Right. That's again, that's where I come in and Kyle come in, Kyle and his team come in to make sure we again are set up in the best way. We're avoiding that double taxation. Right. And, and another con there, we there might be ongoing business risk. Right. If, if the new and the exiting owners have high business risk during that, that transaction stakes might be a little higher. But again, pros and cons uh, uh, with that. So and then if we look at right uh, the, the second strategy that we see often selling to an outsider, third party buyer, this is where I lean on, on Kyle and NYBB group often. Right. They, they can help find these buyers right for your specific industry. Right. That, that's where they, they really shine there. But in many cases, third party sales might yield the, the highest purchase price. Right. And, and that's 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 what we see sometimes. Right. It's, it's less consequential to the owner. Right. If they have a more valuable business, a buyer is a turnkey opportunity. Right. No requirement to, to replace the owner as the employee. 
Um, one common problem here is that the owner of that practice that produces the cash flow, right, becomes that, that owner of that new portfolio, right? So they have to make sure they're still producing that cash flow. But the, con the, the pro there is that you might receive that full, that full value upfront, right, as opposed to, to from a key employee. Um, but so, some common problems I've seen here is that the old practice owner, right, might not be ready to leave. They might want to stay on partially, right? And that new outside buyer might not want that, right? So I've seen that come up a few times. So again, knowing what you want as the practice owner and being really clear with that up front is, is very important. And that will help us navigate right off the bat, which strategy is best for you in the practice. Yeah, if I could just jump in here, Erin. And um, I, I like talking about this, this topic because this is what actually gets deals done, dealing right. with the, the culture and the dynamics between both parties. So you have a doctor that, that owns a medical practice, been at the location for 30, 40 years. You know, they have treated the patients and now treated the patient's kids and you know, in some cases the grandkids and right. have a good reputation. And, you know, they have a legacy there, right, that they have, they have created over the years um, as practice owners age up, they don't necessarily want to do all the back end stuff. So in, in the deals that we have done, essentially we have, because currently we have, we represent a couple of firms right now that we are doing buy sides for. So we're doing acquisitions for billing companies, we're doing acquisitions for urgent care centers and medical yeah. practices. So essentially uh, the practice owner get an opportunity to divest themselves of all the day-to-day, -day, the back end, the billing and all we'll work with insurance companies and all that and so on just focus on the patients. So to your, to your point, Aaron, the buyer will come in, purchase the practice, um, that doctor will get some lump sum payment up front, and then they get hired on as an employee for the new doctor because they have to have some sort of transition, right, between right. both firms because that doctor knows the patient. Um, but it's important that both parties have a really clear on, on, on understanding of each other and how things are going to operate post because there is something called seller's remorse, right? right. So um, a lot of the work has to be done up front to make sure that the post sale, everything is smooth, that both parties are eye to eye and on, 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 on the same page. Right. You know? So th this is actually what moves things. You know, the economics of it was one aspect of it as far as the price of the sale, but having two parties have been able to understand each other, how things are going to happen moving forward. You know, Absolutely. we've seen some cases where doctors were brought up by the hospitals mm -hmm. and um, they were very unhappy about it. You know, they yeah. kind of prefer to stay in their private practice. Right, right. So, right, culture changes, the dynamics change, mm -hmm. right, but relationships with, with, with patients change. So, again, outlining from both parties what expectations and goals are up front is, is so important. And, again, goes back to everything we've just mentioned with working with a strong team of advisors and, and getting the business valuation done and your goals right up front are, are really, really important pieces. Definitely, definitely. So what advice would you give to a business owner that's looking to sell in the next one to three years? Good, so I spend a lot of time on here, but I, I'll keep it short <laughs> and sweet, I promise, right? So uh, the, the point I always bring home to practice owners, we know 100% that you will be exiting the practice at some point. So, so again, the longer timeline we have, it gives us the most options to look into, right? And, and having the mindset too, that this might not take six to 12 months, right? It, it might take a few years to find a, a good buyer or talk about that process. And a few questions that you should be asking yourself as you're beginning to get the practice ready for exiting is, right, how, how is your practice protected, right? Or are, are you thinking about how you want your retirement to look? And what is your plan to convert your business to cash, right? Ultimately, that's what we're, we're all thinking about, right, as practice owners. What is our plan there, right? Do, do we have a team of advisors in place? When was the last time we spoke with our team of, ad, of advisors, right? And, and I encourage you to, to work with Kyle and his team and myself. And, and what my mission is, is always to take a holistic, integrative approach, right? Coordinating all these facets. I promise I, I, it's a lot more underwhelming as, as we're making it sound. <laughs> but, right, reducing risk, making sure that we're, we're doing so in the most tax efficient way. And 
making sure, hey, that legacy of the practice continues, right? That's that's what we're looking for. So those are kind of a couple things we can we can chew on at the moment as we're thinking about the process. And there's other legacies too as well, right? Because that doctor has had a, had an identity, right? Over the past mm -hmm. years as being a doctor. So a doctor that's retiring, okay, so what I'm going to do now, usually how I paint that picture is that um, you can use what you have created to create other legacies, right? You may have Absolutely. grandkids that are into maybe an opera, so want to be an opera singer, want to be in dance, want to be in sports, or if they have other dreams, you can actually use the proceeds of that to... Um, yeah fund the dreams of your family and Absolutely. you can be philanthropic and support charities. There's a lot of cool things you can do in the name of your practice, right? Yes. So there's ways you can continue that. You may not be practicing medicine or you can go out, you know, actually go back to teaching and just other yeah. things you can do. Um, also, I try to think, okay, five years from now, 10 years from now, like wh where do you see yourself and right. essentially work working backwards. So Erin, yeah. this is fabulous. Um, I'm have to look and see if there are any questions that, that came in through the comments. But uh, you know, I know there's a lot of information that you that, that you went over, and one of the, the reasons why you want to work with an advisor such as yourself is because this is a lot that you know, yeah, because you're talking about HIPAA compliance, talking about JCO. You, right. There's a lot of things that's going on in the healthcare marketplace, and you can't keep up with everything. I mean, HR is another big one as well. Absolutely. You know, you know, taxes and all that. So it's a lot. You want to make sure you have the right professionals on your team. So um, that's what we have built here with m &A. We have a team of 40 um, professionals. So m and is one of our board members, actually, with, at m and She leads up the New Jersey chapter, but she works with clients all across the country. So so this is on LinkedIn, right? So the folks on LinkedIn know how to find you, right? You are <laughs> you are yes. LinkedIn, but you know, for this for folks that are doing watching the podcast and watching this on other platforms, you know, how can you know dentists, how can physical therapists, doctors, and other you know healthcare professionals get a hold of you? Absolutely. So so my email is Aaron.hoffman at cfsllc.com. You're always more than welcome to connect with me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, you can check out my, my website as well. And that is going to be on, on the CFS website, cfsllc.com backslash Aaron Hoffman. Uh, and then always happy to be a resource for people. Awesome. And what I'm going to do, Aaron, I'm, I'm going to post here in the chat for everyone, um, the contact information for yourself and for everyone that's in the team, they can click on that link there and that card and access everyone that's part of the team. So this is the fun part. So we, we hear on, on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn and so on. So now we're going to take the, the party to Clubhouse, right? We're going to see who right. has Clubhouse has some, has some questions um, for you. I'm going to the chat here. Um, this is the last opportunity to ask any questions for, for Aaron. Maybe you, you did a fabulous job. I think you covered everything. There's, there, there's no questions here. <laughs> so let me do this here. One second. Cool. So I just posted a link for Clubhouse. So we're going to go on Clubhouse for another 20 or 30 minutes and um, engage with some of the folks there in Clubhouse and ask, answer any questions anyone has on, on the topic. So, But I want to thank each and one of you guys for attending. This has been an M&A broadcast. Brought to you by Ms. Erin Hoffman of Certified Planet Financial Services and myself, Kyle Griffith, the CEO of m &A Network and partner at the NRB Group. Thank you for your time and um, see you next time. Thanks, Kyle. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Erin.